Back in the 80s and the 90s, there wasn't a whole lot of dudes who didn't walk the streets of Queens with fear and respect for Kenneth Supreme McGriff and his crew of ruthless gangsters known as the Supreme Team. But in a crowd of small-time street dudes who didn't dare look at Prem or his crew the wrong way, one man in particular wasn't afraid to stand up to them. I'm talking about no other than Troy Singleton, otherwise known as Big Nose Troy. In a time when Queens was running with heavy hitters like Prem, Prince, 50 Cent, and Fat Cat Nichols, Troy was one of the few who didn't back down. This dude was part of a new wave of street legends who didn't give two cents about the old guard's rep. Growing up real tight with dudes like Prodigy from Mob Deep and E Money Bags, his tightest brother and right hand man, Big Nose Troy, was involved in multiple robberies in Queens and its surrounding areas as a youngin', earning him a reputation as a dude you didn't want to mess with. An incident that later came back to bite him after Troy saw the name of one of the Supreme Team's members on the documents that incriminated him for the double hit, he and his brother, E Moneybags, declared war on the Supreme Team and spent several months running down and slapping up anyone who had any kind of connection to Prem. That's a bold move, y'all. After Troy smacked around some of Prem's closest associates, including Irv Gotti and Ron Gunner Robinson, Prem put a bag on his head, a bag that caught up with him in October 2001, when he was brutally executed outside the club Van Wick on Liberty Avenue in South Jamaica, Queens. The story of how this OG street legend declared war on Prem and his crew and ended up paying the price for it is a pretty long one. Troy Singleton, aka Big Nose Troy, was born in Queens in 68. But because there ain't a whole lot of public information on Do It Out of There and different sources have different information on his origins, it's hard to know exactly when bro was born. But even though there ain't as much info out there on Troy as there is on other big players from Queens from those decades like Supreme McGriff, 50 Cent, and Fat Cat, that doesn't take away from the fact that back in the day, Troy was a pretty feared dude in the streets of New York. And along with 50 Cent, E Moneybags and Hamo was one of the only four people who was known not to be afraid of the one and only Ken of Supreme McGriff, leader of the Supreme team. One thing that made Troy stand out in the streets as a youngin' was that he embodied a new generation of street dudes who didn't care about the reputation of the old guard. And when I say the old guard, I mean the one made famous by the likes of Preem, Prince, Fat Cat Nichols, and even Jay-Z. Since he was just a youngin', Troy suffered from sickle cell anemia, a real painful and limiting condition. As some of y'all might know, Prodigy from Mob Deep had the same disease and he and Troy formed a real tight bond over their shared illness. It's even been said that when Prodigy was in the hospital, Troy would visit him hella often and even bring him food from Red Lobster for dinner. That's a real brother, y'all. Another dude Troy was especially tight with, pretty much for his whole life, was Eric Smith, also known as E-Moneybags. That's right, y'all. The same E-Moneybags who accidentally hit Cobra Johnson, also known as Black Just, as he was trying to murk Prem in his car outside Jamaica Coliseum Mall back in 99. Growing up, E and Troy were partners in crime in the streets of Queens and were involved in all kinds of robberies and stickups in Jamaica and its surrounding areas. As the years went by, Big Nose Troy and E Moneybags became two of the Supreme Team's biggest ops, which ended up pretty badly both for all parties involved. On top of being a close brother to E Moneybags, who hated Prem and his crew more than anyone else in the world, Big Nose Troy had his own reasons to want to take the Supreme Team down. Most of y'all might already know why E Moneybags hated the Supreme Team, but if you don't know, let me break it down for you right quick. Before he ended up getting thrown into the pen for life, Prem was selling tagged cars through a woman named Z. When E decided to buy a car from Prem, he was told to put a down payment of $1,000 for it, which he gave to Z. But at some point after putting down the payment, he changed his mind and decided to use the money for a down payment on a new Lincoln Navigator instead of buying a tagged whip. When he personally asked Prem for a refund on the $1,000 he put down, Prem treated him like a fool and refused to give him a refund, which triggered a legendary beef between them that ended with the tragic, accidental passing of Black Just in 99. As for Big Nose Troy, his beef with the Supreme Team had a whole nother origin. 
Let me lay it down for y'all. In July of 95, a basketball tournament called the Peace Tournament was held in Baisley Bond Park in South Jamaica, Queens in honor of two men hit by a police officer in December of 94, pretty close to the ball court where the tournament was held that day. There were 300 people from Baisley Park Projects that day cheering the teams on, and in the second half, something real tragic happened that stained the memory of the Peace Tournament forever. About five minutes into the second half, shots were fired on the court. It was unclear who exactly had opened fire, but what we do know is that as soon as the shootout was over, two spectators were deceased and several others injured. The name of the two persons were Pierre Mitchell and Jamal Adams. And even though the cops had a hella hard time identifying who was involved in the shootout, which was confirmed to be drug related, your boy Troy was eventually identified in a lineup at the 113th precinct and taken to the big house for second degree hit. One big thing to keep in mind about the whole incident is that as y'all might already know, the Baisley Park Projects was the home turf of none other than Supreme, which made it a pretty bad move on Troy's part to start whacking people on that court. Even though the Peace Tournament shooting and the ensuing chaos was talked about by author Ethan Brown in his revealing book, Queens Reign Supreme in 2010, some information on Troy's involvement in the whole thing just came to light pretty recently. As Big Nose was being taken in for his alleged participation in the shootout, a Supreme Team member allegedly gave a statement against him. And word on the street is that James Antney, also known as Bimmy, was also set to sign an affidavit and testify against Troy. Jude caught wind of this, and even though Bimmy didn't end up testifying against him and Big Nose Troy was allowed to walk, he took it hella personal that he was about to be ratted out and the incident was enough for Troy to develop a whole lot of hate towards Supreme's crew. So after what happened with his brother E Money Bags getting cheated out of his money and the double hit incrimination, Big Nose Troy and E decided to do the unthinkable and declare war on the Supreme team. And when I say war, I mean war, man. Basically, anybody who ran with the Supreme team was cool with them, talked about them, hung around them, or was in any way associated with them became an enemy. He and E Moneybags will walk the streets of Queens, pistol whipping, smacking, and slapping up dozens of dudes affiliated with Prime, stoking the fire of war that everyone knew would end in tragedy. Troy hated Prime and his crew so much that he was known to stalk some of his gang members outside of the Universal offices, where he would allegedly run down on his ops and slap the ever-loving daylight out of them in the middle of the day on Broadway, the busiest street in all of New York. You might think that would be enough for dude to take out all his anger, but nah, man. Big Nose Troy took it even further and hit Supreme right where it hurts and went after his men at Murder, Inc., his beloved record label. During his rampage to victimize anyone who had a connection to Prem, Big Nose Troy ran down on Ja Rule's manager, a dude by the name of Ron Gutter Robinson, and smacked him around some. Around the same time, Big Nose Troy and Nathan Green Eye Born May, another OG street legend, hunted down Irv Gotti, one of Prem's closest brothers and the head of Murder, Inc., and beat him up as well. By 2001, Cream had enough of Big Nose Troy and decided to hit two birds with one stone. According to official documents from his later court trial, Cream enlisted the help of Emmanuel Dog Mosley, a member of his crew. According to the testimony of Mosley himself, Cream asked him to put together a team of hitmen to take out E Money Bags and Big Nose Troy, putting up a bag of $50,000 for their heads. In Cream's eyes, E Money Bags had to be whacked in retaliation for hitting Black Just, and Troy had to be put down for what he did at the Peace Tournament and all the other madness he started after that incident. In Dog's own words, he organized a crew of hitmen at Prem's request and said they'd whack whoever they found first. Unfortunately for E Moneybags, he was the dude they found first, and he was whacked in his car in July 2001. That's an incident I covered in detail in another video, so be sure to check that out, y'all. Three months later on October 28th, with the help of hitmen like Aaron Granson, Mosley's team of hitmen caught up with Troy and took him out execution style outside of a nightclub called the Club Van Wick on Liberty Avenue in South Jamaica while he was on his way back to his car. After getting hit eight times, dude had no chance of surviving. For several months after taking Troy out, Mosley and his crew kept searching for Green Eye Born, but they never found him. 
Basically, the hits on Troy and E Money bags were some of the main reason why Preem ended up getting sentenced to life in the big house back in 07, a sentence he's still serving out to this day at USP McCrary in Pine Knot, Kentucky. For a dude who once ran the streets of Queens with an iron fist, things ended up pretty terribly for Preem. All his co-defendants ratted him out at the first chance they got. And even though his defense tried to argue that both E Money Bags and Big Nose Troy were threats to his life, and that's why he had to have them executed, the judge didn't buy it. Regardless of all the beef they had between them and all the offensive stuff they did in the streets throughout their lives, it's a real shame Troy had to go out like that. Rip to that man. To this day, Big Nose Troy is still remembered as an OG legend of the streets of Queens, and his legacy lives on to this day through his son, Troy Singleton, who has gone on to launch a decently successful rap career. About a year before his passing, 50 Cent shouted him out on Ghetto Quran with the lyrics, Coming up, I heard sipping too much booze will leave you confused. And if you watch the news, you see players in the game. They lose. I'm forgetting Lefty and Jazz, Pretty Tony and Lance, Head Luke, Mel Son, Troy and E Money Bags. Through his family and songs like these, dude's memory lives on to this day. Just hearing those lyrics from 50 Cent, it's crazy how all these gangsters end up doing completely different things. Troy and E Money Bags, fatalities of the street life, Preem is serving out a life sentence in Kentucky, and 50 Cent is, well, you know 50. As one of New York's most notorious street dudes in the generation that followed Preem's, Big Nose Troy made a massive impact on Queen Street's culture. Even if not as much as known about him as other legendary gangsters of that era, his mark on the streets will never be erased. 